Uh, hello and welcome uh, to today's webinar. Uh, this is part three of our product webinars uh, series, basically. Uh, and uh, today's topic, as you all know, uh, it's going to be uh, mastering the events uh, and the group bookings in Clock PMS through the events module um, that we have in, in the system. Um, I see quite a lot of people have joined us. Uh, thank you for this. I see a lot of familiar faces. Thank you for all, all the loyal attendees that have joined uh, basically every webinar until now. It's a pleasure to have you back. And I see also a lot of familiar faces with uh, which we've worked before together during implementations or onboardings. Uh, so it, it's quite a pleasure to see all of you joining. Uh, so, who am I? Uh, my name is Celia. I'll be your host, as, as always, with these webinars. Uh, I'm here a, a knowledge specialist uh, at Clock PMS. And basically what I, what I deal with is um, the system understanding, the system of everything, how, how it works, writing content, doing these webinars, and basically transmitting all the knowledge that I have about the system to all of you um, and all of our client base, and not just the ones that uh, we've worked uh, together before. Uh, I've been de dealing with onboardings and implementations for about five years, and uh, yeah, for the past year, I've been uh, dealing with uh, with this new position and these new responsibilities. Uh, and one of these responsibilities, of course, is doing these webinars and uh, basically providing you the the most uh, interesting, accurate, and to the point information about using the system and using the modules. So today we're going to be focusing on the events module. Uh, and what are we going to be, uh, what are we going to talk about? So we'll start first with a kind of a general overview of the module. Uh, what does it do? Uh, what functions it, it provides and so on without going too much into detail. And then we'll be talking about um, the two main use cases of the module, handling group reservations or group bookings uh, for which uh, the, the, the module is very effective in. Uh, and also we'll be talking about how, how to use the, the module uh, when you have actual events uh, with meeting room reservations, catering activities, uh, and basically all the mix uh, involved uh, when it comes to, to an event. Uh, we'll take a, a look at the event confirmation app as well, which is a relatively new feature uh, for the module. Um, maybe a lot of you are not familiar with it yet. Um, so we're going to have a look at, at that one as well. Uh, we're going to have a look at the, the, the documents that uh, are present related to events. Uh, how you can use them, how you can create custom ones as well uh, to match your needs. And of course, we'll be uh, finishing with a quick uh, Q&A. Uh, every single one of you should uh, see there is a Q&A bubble uh, at the, at, uh, of, of the meeting controls. Uh, you can write your questions throughout the webinar. Uh, and at the end, um, if there are too many questions, uh, since we have a little bit of limited time for, for the Q&A, I'm going to pick up uh, pick uh, the the most interesting ones uh, and answer those. Um, of course, we'll try to answer as much uh, as many of your questions as as possible for the time that we have. Uh, great. So uh, let's start with um, with a quick general overview of of the module, uh, basically, and what it does. Uh, and uh, for for that purpose, actually, I'm going to uh, switch into into the system. Uh, essentially, so that we can have a look at um, at a, at the situation at an event. Uh, essentially, uh, so here what we are looking at at the moment uh, is uh, essentially the event page. This is a completed event page, um, and it involves everything, including uh, blocks for hotel rooms, including reservations for meeting rooms, including catering activities, indication of catering activities, and so on. So essentially, the, the main purpose of the module is to be kind of a one-stop shop uh, for everything related to the event and to have a single control uh, or a, a control place uh, from where you can see everything related to the event, uh, control it very easily, make changes when necessary uh, very easily, and basically have a, a great overview 
overview uh, of, uh, of everything that has been discussed and everything related to the event. And as you can see here, we have uh, quite a lot of sections. We have the meeting room bookings where we have booked our meeting room. We have indicated how many people are going to be attending, what will be the actual event. We see a business conference. Uh, what should be the setup of the meeting room? Is it going to be a theater style? Is it going to be a classroom style, uh, et cetera? We have uh, also indication about any catering activities uh, related to this event. Here we see that we have a coffee break in the, in the morning and then we have a lunch at, at noon. Uh, again, with indication how many people are going to be attending, how many uh, at which locations these uh, activities are going to happen uh, and so on. Uh, furthermore, we have our offers that we have sent uh, potentially. Uh, we have our blocks for hotel rooms and this uh, a major focus that we'll talk about in, in, in the next point about the blocks. Uh, we see any hotel room uh, bookings that are related to the event uh, as well created in the system and so on. And of course, one of the major things of the event module is that for everything that we have here, we can of course issue one single invoice if that is the case. Of course, we can generate separate invoices if needed, uh, but also we can involve and add absolutely everything from me the, the rent for the meeting room, any stationaries like notebooks, uh, pens, uh, pencils that we provide, um, bottle of water at, in the conference room. Um, we can add all our charges for the coffee break, for the lunch, etc. And we can even add the, the rate charges for the hotel rooms to this event invoice, depending on if the organizer is paying or not as well. And we can issue a single invoice. Uh, so that is kind of the main purpose of the module, just to have a single control point for uh, for events or for group bookings, which can be very dynamic. The information can be very dynamic, very flexible, change constantly. And of course, there are many uh, different elements involved, hotel rooms, meeting rooms, uh, catering activities, uh, and so on. And uh, to enable easy management of, of, of all of this, you have the events module and specifically the events page to allow you to handle that very easily and, and very clearly. Now, going uh, into um, the first topic uh, or the first use case, the main uh, use case of the events module, and that is using the events module for uh, handling group bookings and group reservations. Now, why would we use the events module for, for group bookings? Now, oh, I've changed to another um, event uh, on the screen. Well, um, when it comes to reservations for a lot of rooms, um, usually it can be that, again, things are very flexible, especially in the beginning or very dynamic, especially in the beginning of the negotiations. Um, at, at the beginning, it, they might have needed 30 rooms. Then a couple of days later, maybe they would actually need 28 rooms. Then one week later, again, that number changes, or maybe even uh, prices change based on these negotiations over time. Um, so uh, things are very dynamic. Uh, and uh, in order to, to handle that and to avoid creating some dummy bookings in the system for, for no reason, um, or, uh, or using uh, out of service statuses of, of rooms or artificially changing availability, uh, to avoid all that, um, we can handle this group requests for many rooms uh, through the events module. Uh, very easily, very quickly, we can also block our rooms and so on. Uh, and also, of course, when it comes to that many rooms, uh, at some point, uh, the number, the quantity of rooms would be um, maybe too much for your comfort uh, because, of course, uh, deposits, uh, deposit amounts might be different when it comes to that many rooms. There is a higher risk if something happens and the whole thing gets canceled uh, for you to, to have just some empty unsold rooms. Um, so the events module allows you to, to handle that very easily, uh, very quickly, request deposits, pay deposits, uh, and so on, block rooms, uh, et cetera. Now, to make it uh, clear, uh, we are actually going to be looking at use cases, and um, we're going to basically go through 
the whole process together with you about creating uh, such a uh, inquiry basically for, for a group booking to the point where we are actually creating the reservations for, for that group. Now, for those of you who are uh, newer to Clock PMS uh, or not yet familiar that much with the events module, uh, you can basically create or access any of the screens for the events uh, here from the navigation and then section uh, event. Uh, we have option uh, the, the search essentially, which will open this screen here, uh, which is a very useful tool to find uh, various events that you already have created in the system. You see plenty of different filters by which you can search. Uh, we have our meeting room calendar, which we'll see at a later stage uh, in the webinar. Uh, and also, of course, the option to create a, a new event. Now, uh, I'm not going to be staying too much actually on these fields here. Instead, I'm going to open and edit this event that I have started uh, to create. Now, uh, let's take an example and how we can use this. So, mega travel company contacts us. Now, something very important to note about events and uh, or when creating events in the system is that you always need to have a company profile selected in the event. Um, of course, that is fine in many cases because indeed a company is organizing the event, but uh, in, in some cases, the event might not be organized by, by, uh, by a company. It might be a wedding that being done in your property. And obviously then it's not really a company that's doing the, uh, the wedding in many cases, uh, but still you need a company profile allocated. So in that case, you can simply, for example, create a company profile just for the purposes of creating the event. Let's say wedding on uh, 5th of April and save or John and Mary's wedding, whatever. Just create a profile um, that is clear enough for what it is. Now, in our case, essentially, uh, um, a company, a travel agent has contacted us uh, and they've indicated that they want quite a substantial number of rooms uh, for this period. So I've created my event. Um, I started creating my event. I gave it a name. Now, the name can be anything, uh, essentially, uh, but um, you can use codes, you can use names. It really depends on the type of the event. Very common occurrences if you work with tour operators or travel agents that are providing these, uh, these groups is to write a, the group code. In many cases, those groups have a code or, or so on. In our case, we have tour series number 20 is going to be our name of the event. We have our company that's organizing it. And here now, this is one of the most important parts. Uh, the, the status of the event, uh, because based on this, um, availability will be reduced or not in terms of uh, hotel rooms when we start indicating um, the requested rooms. So for the moment, let's say that um, our negotiations for this event are at a very early stage. So it's not really clear. It's really a ballpark figure how many rooms they're going to need uh, and so on. So they're not really sure exactly. Is it going to be 20 rooms, 30 rooms, 25 rooms? It's not really clear. So it's a very early stage and they simply just uh, want an offer. Maybe they're still kind of window shopping about different offers for, for their group. Uh, so for the moment, I'll just leave it as optional. We'll see in a moment why. Uh, and uh, there's plenty of other information that can be entered. Most of it is self-explanatory. I'm not going to go through all these fields. Uh, again, most of them are self-explanatory. Uh, or if not, we have very detailed articles in our support portal about events. Uh, and there you can get also quite a lot of information and uh, also information for each field specifically. But of course, what I need to enter, which is of course a requirement, is the arrival and the departure. Once I've entered my details, essentially I'll be taken to the event page. It, the event page is going to be created. Now here, some of you might be seeing um, a difference. Uh, what they're seeing now at the moment on, on, from my account 
can be a little bit different from what you see in your account. That depends on what license you have for Clock PMS. If you don't have a license for the MICE module, which uh, uh, includes meeting rooms uh, and catering, basically these two parts you're not going to see. These two sections you're not going to see. So uh, don't get bothered. Uh, uh, is it something different? Are you on the same version of the PMS as me or, or whatever? No, it's simply because these two fields will show up when you have the license for meeting rooms included in your subscription. Uh, so many of you might not be seeing this, this part at all, but all of you will be seeing this part, which is built in into the core product of, of Clock PMS Plus, which allows you to use the blocks. So now what we've done, we've created our event page, and now we have our block section. Now, this is very important, and this is related to the hotel rooms. So I'll go into our block table. I'm clicking on edit. And here you see all of my room types that I have in the system for each day of the event that we have here. And uh, here in the parentheses, we have how many available rooms we have at the moment, free rooms we have at the moment for the respective day. So uh, let's say that with the organizer, this company contacted us and they kind of gave us a figure, okay, we'll need uh, six of your superior rooms. So basically all that you have available. Uh, we're going to be needing also three double rooms as well. And we're going to be needing also, let's say seven apartments. So by clicking here on this little pencil icon, I'm applying these blocks for the whole period of stay uh, for the event. Of course, uh, individually, you can just simply click on, on a date and enter a different number. Maybe from the 13 onwards, there'll be one extra room needed from this type and so on. So you can uh, indicate one extra type. So I've entered my number of rooms that I'm blocking and I've saved. Now, what does this do? Uh, at the moment, it only kind of gives us an indication uh, in our block pickup report, in our occupancy forecast report here as well, uh, that we have these rooms uh, blocked as optional. Now, the fact that they are optional, what does this mean? This means that they in no way reduce your availability. So at the moment, at this stage, the block being optional and res uh, respectively the, the event being optional, or actually the other way around, the event being optional, respectively the block being optional, these rooms are not actually reserved for, for, these, for this event. It's simply like an indication uh, because again, we are at a very early stage. They really don't have no idea yet or not a, a more accurate idea how many rooms they, they will be needing. So they're giving us some kind of a ballpark figure. We don't want to limit ourselves in our sales. So we are going to be at this stage uh, having everything optional. Now, what else do we have here? Obviously when a company or an event organizer, a group organizer is window shopping or shopping around about offers and so on, the, the thing that they are mostly interested in are the prices, of course, or one of the most important thing are prices. Now here, when we're uh, in our table for, for the blocks, we do see our rate column. So what can we do? We can actually edit this. And for our double room, I can now select a rate that we have in the system. So let's say that I will uh, select this rate. This is the rate that we're going to be using for any potential reservations later on. Um, now with events or with larger groups, with larger quantities, you know, maybe there are certain negotiations in regards to price and uh, you're going to be offering them a, a slightly discounted price and so on. Uh, that is absolutely fine. You can actually override the price from the rate by using the manual price here. So what we're going to say is that we're blocking these three double rooms uh, on this rate, but the price would be 80 pounds per night, regardless what is the price in the rate. So the price would be 80 pounds uh, per night. And here I can also actually indicate for how many adults and children and so on we're offering this price. So I'm going to be entering this and, and I'm going to be saving. 
And essentially now we have this rate with this price attached to the block. And I'm going to do basically the same with, with all my other um, rooms that room types that I have blocked. I'm just going to be attaching a rate and entering the negotiated price that we uh, that we have with the with the organizer of this event. So I'm entering everything here, and uh, we'll see one other situation again, very common that happens now. As you can see, what I did now is that I indicated that every every one of these room types, uh, seven apartments, three double rooms, and six superior rooms, we have negotiated them uh, with these prices for double occupancy. So we're blocking three double rooms for two adults and zero children for a price of 80 pounds per night. But let's say that there is also a request to have another two double rooms, but for single occupancy. Um, and obviously then the price would be slightly different than the double occupancy. Now, because I don't have another option here to, to block the double room, those extra two rooms, what I'm going to do is use the plus button here. And I'm clicking on block. And I say for my double room type, I want to add another block. I'm going to be using the same rate uh, that we use for the double occupancy. Again, this is very situational but a rate is always recommended to have and i'm going to say okay in this case it's going to be 70 pounds for single occupancy and i'm going in to indicate that this is for one adult and zero children once i do this you're going to see now that we have one extra row here for the double room do you see it it just popped up uh and i can say now okay then i'm blocking two more double rooms however on a different rate with a different price for the different number of adults and children. And now I have basically a completed block offer. I have my room times uh, blocked or at least indicated at this stage with uh, rates attached, with negotiated prices indicated and with number of, of guests for, for these rooms also indicated. And I'm going to save and close. And now the next step is obviously to send this offer to the organizer. And how do we do this? Essentially, we all do this through this section, the event document. We click on add. And here from the templates, we have the option to choose. Now, the ones that you see at the above, these are our own built-in templates that you can make use of. However, you can also create your own templates. We'll see this briefly at the end of the webinar. Uh, you can create your own templates for all kinds of different things, different offers. Here you see I have created a template just for an event offer without any accommodation involved. I have another um, offer, template offer created that includes meeting room, catering, and accommodation. And I have a, a third template just for uh, groups, just for hotel rooms. No meeting rooms, no catering, nothing, just hotel rooms. Uh, involved. And I'm going to be actually using this one. I'm going to select my language in which I want to send it as long as I have the template in those different languages. And we are going to be seeing now um, the next steps. Here we can enter a subject. We can also um, we can also pre-built it and have it uh, by default set up here. And of course, to which person are we going to be sending this information? If we have a contact person attached to the event, they will be automatically entered here. Once we enter all the information and we proceed to the next step, the actual offer is going to be created. And here at this stage, we are going to be seeing this template with this offer, with all the information that we have added. And most importantly, here you see all the information about the blocks that we have added. So we see for each date, how many rooms, what room types are we blocking, with what price, etc. cetera. Uh, so we see everything basically listed down and of course, a grand total at the bottom. 
and I can proceed. Uh, at this stage, I, I can actually make some changes to this template. I can add some text. I can remove some text here. You see it's completely free, this editor, to, to allow you to make changes. So if you want to add an extra sentence, an extra warning, an extra requirement, whatever, you're free to do so at this stage just for this email that you're going to be sending. But we see basically all our offers here, the rates, number of rooms blocked, prices, and grand total. Once I save, we're going to see the final uh, offer. And from here, I can now send it via email or print it, of course. Um, and this way, the organizer will receive it and, um, and review your pricing. Uh, here you see basically every offer that you sent, uh, every document that you sent will be listed down here. Now, what happens at the next stage? The, the organizer receives your event, uh, your offer. They're happy with the prices. They're happy with your, uh, with your hotel, with the rooms, with the location, etc. And they want to basically take things further uh, into confirming this event. Once you get the note from, from the organizer, phone call, email, etc., that they're ready to go ahead, um, task number one essentially is to change the status of the, of, the, of the event. Change it from optional or allotment, change it to non-guaranteed or guaranteed. Why? Because when an event becomes non-guaranteed or guaranteed, then also the blocks become uh, uh, stop being optional. And now basically these rooms, these number of rooms are actually reserved for the event and they're blocked on, uh, in, in your availability. Now, if we open and just to, to visualize this, if we go into our occupancy forecast and have a look at the dates, which is 10th of, 10th of April onwards, we can see that uh, though we have an indication that we have basically blocked rooms. So you see for my apartment, I have capacity of nine, but now I have blocks seven coming from this group event, group offer. The moment I changed the status to non-guaranteed. And now you see that actually free rooms at the moment for that period is only two. So when an event is non-guaranteed or guaranteed, um, and respectively, the blocks are not optional, uh, then they reduce your availability and actually are reserved for, for this event. You see, if I change now to optional again, and I refresh our occupancy forecast, you see apartment, there are no blocks for that period. And basically all of my inventory is being sold. I'm not reserving anything for, for the event. So the moment the organizer indicates to you that they're ready to proceed further uh, and so on, they actually want you to stay with you. They want the rooms reserved and so on. Task number one is to ensure that your blocks are not optional so that you reserve the rooms. Now, what is the difference between non-guaranteed and guaranteed? Well, obviously uh, here it comes to uh, deposits. Non-guaranteed until uh, it's, while well, you haven't yet received a deposit. Once you receive a deposit, if you require such, of course, you can then mark your event as guaranteed so that you have peace of mind that your event is guaranteed, that the deposit is paid, or that this group is guaranteed basically, and that the, the, the deposit is, uh, is paid uh, that, that's needed for this, that you require for, for this event. So at this stage, we have an event page for a group, uh, and we have roughly 18, 18 rooms blocked from our inventory, but those are not actually bookings yet. Uh, so of course, uh, at some point, we need to convert those into bookings. Now, when are you going to do this is really up to you. Uh, you can convert these blocks uh, when you get a rooming list for the, from the organizer, for example. Uh, or you can create them and convert these blocks into actual bookings when you 
uh, feel the need to start allocating rooms for that period and you need to have those bookings so that you know you allocate the, the bookings to the different rooms on, on the calendar, for example. So the, it's really up to you when do you want to create those uh, to convert the blocks into actual bookings. However, how do we do this? How do we convert? Now, the most easy way uh, and the one that we usually recommend, generally recommend is to do that, uh, again, from the event page. You open the respective event page, you scroll down to the section bookings, you click on book, and you select the block that you want to convert now. So let's say that uh, we received a rooming list for all the, all the rooms, etc. Uh, and I want to start converting those into, into actual bookings. So I will start with my double room, for example, for double occupancy, I'll select that block. Now, what does this do and why it's useful to create it from the event page? Because when you do it like this, uh, most of the information is going to be filled in. You see, we have our period here selected. We have our event company and block selected. Now, this is a major thing uh, and major, uh, very important thing to remember is to uh, make sure that you do not uh, change the selection here. Uh, because there is a risk in certain situations that you might allocate this booking to the event, but you're not allocating it to a block. So here, for example, if I select this option here, this is the actual event that I have created, uh, this event here that we had for, for the group, but this is not any of the blocks. So what I'm going to be doing if I do this, I'm going to be creating an extra reservation on top of the 18 rooms that I have blocked. Of course, there can be certain situations where this is necessary. Maybe on the day of the event, um, uh, an extra person decided to join and an extra room is needed and it's, you have that extra room. It doesn't make sense to block that one room just to convert it later on. You can just uh, create it and allocate it to the event. But in the majority of cases, um, you know, we need to allocate it to a block so that we can our de deplete our block. So doing this, selecting only the event is not depleting any of my blocks. I need to make sure that I have selected the block for the double room, for the double occupancy, et cetera, so that I ensure I'm not um, overbooking this event, uh, essentially. We have the room type entered. We have our number of adults and children from the block, uh, the price, of course, the rate, basically all the information here is, is uh, entered. Now, if you have a rooming list with names uh, of, of, of the guests, of course, you can enter at least the main guest name here and save. If you don't have a rooming list with names, it's absolutely fine just to save like this. You do have the company allocated and later on, maybe when the, when the event starts and guests are checking in or when the group arrives and guests are checking in, or when you receive a rooming list later on with, with actual names, you can adjust the names and ent enter them later on. Uh, so entering names here, it's, it's, it's really optional. Um, but yeah, if you have the names, why not enter at least the main guest? Now, of course, I have three double rooms for double occupancy uh, booked or blocked. So I want to create all of them in bulk. I'm going to use the create multiple uh, button here. However, there is one also uh, an interesting point that you can use, and that is this button here, transfer rate charges to the company event. Now, this really depends on the situation, uh, if you're going to use this or not. This option, this button you're going to use when the organizer of this group wants an invoice, uh, a single invoice for all the rooms from the group, uh, and so on. Uh, it's not that every booking, every room will be paying individually, et cetera, but they want a single invoice at the end for all the rooms. So uh, while creating these bookings, again, this is important, while creating them, because later on, this doesn't work. If you're editing an existing booking, this button doesn't work. So while you're creating the, your bookings, you can click on transfer uh, the charges, the rate charges to the company event. And now I can proceed and say, okay, I want to create my three bookings uh, for the three double rooms on this. I click on save and copy. 
uh, that will uh, basically now create these three bookings in total. Uh, optionally, I can edit and maybe make small changes to each of the bookings if needed, etc. Um, it's it's really optional. Uh, but uh, at the end, uh, this is a quick way to create you know many bookings for this uh, block and for for this event. Now, when we go back to the event page, we are going to see now that uh, here in the drop down menu, we have our three bookings listed that we have created. So again, from the booking page, you can review and have a general overview of all the, all the bookings that you have, hotel room bookings. And I can proceed and create the bookings and convert the rest of the blocks, basically following the same procedure. More importantly, you see now that we have a folio opened. And when I open this folio, we'll see essentially all the charges from the three bookings transferred here. Uh, and yeah, we at the end can issue a single invoice uh, to the event organizer for all these rooms. Again, if that is the agreement, of course. Once I create and convert my rest of the blocks, Again, they will uh, basically they will be uh, the charges will be transferred here, and I have one single invoice that I can send uh, to to the organizer um, of of the of the group. So this is uh, a very useful tool for for group bookings, as you can see. Why? Because of the the options that we have for indication for the blocks, um, as as most of you who who deal with 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 such group requests such group inquiries and so on uh you very well know that it's a very how to say cumbersome uh process at, uh, especially in the beginning when one day the number of rooms that they need is is 20 the next day is 30 the day after is 50 things constantly change prices might uh, might be changing uh, and to avoid, again, creating some just dummy bookings to handle this uh, or leave notes here and there, um, you have the event page to handle this and the blocks. And again, while the block is optional, it does not reduce availability. Uh, when it is active, it does reduce availability. And one other thing, actually, as I mentioned, uh, which I, we ha I haven't mentioned yet, uh, which is related to the blocks, is that um, I can actually set an individual block, just that one to be optional. So let's say that, um, you know, the double room on double occupancy, the superior, the apartment, they're set in stone, they're confirmed and so on. But the organizer then calls me and tells me, uh, you know what, I may need also two double rooms for single occupancy for, for single guests, but that is really, you know, uh, optional. I'm not sure yet. So do not reserve rooms, but just have it in mind. Uh, maybe I will actually need them. So what I can do is just the double room on single occupancy market is optional so that I do not block two more rooms for sale because the actual organizer told me these two rooms are really optional. I really don't know if, if I'm going to use those, um, if I'm going to use those uh, or not. So don't reserve them, but have them in mind. So I'm just setting this to be optional. And this way, two of my double rooms will still be sold online elsewhere on the book direct, on the, cha on the channels or anywhere else for, for that matter. Um, so, so yeah, you do have that option absolutely. Um, in if if the situation is such. Now, one other thing here, uh, very useful. Um, commonly with with groups and so on, and with certain travel agents or tour operators, you have the so-called uh, tour series, group series, uh, etc., where you basically have a set in stone number of rooms for a set in stone period, uh, just every month, let's say. So 20 rooms will be arriving this month for five days, 20 rooms will be arriving next month for five days, and so on and so forth. Uh, tour series, group series, you know, the many names, um, same thing, uh, essentially. So I'm pretty sure many of you dealing with group inquiries, group bookings uh, do, do know this. 
so what can we do? Um, obviously, so with, let's say with that with this company, Mega Travel, we agreed that uh, every month for uh, basically five, six nights, um, we'll provide them these 18 rooms. Let's say that my block here is again, uh, is going to be active. And this is going to be for the next year. So every month for the next one year. Of course, doing the same thing uh, 12 times, basically 12 months, uh, entering blocks, selecting rates, entering prices, and so on, uh, will be very time consuming, very, very time consuming. So what we've, uh, what we've done is we provided a, a function to copy from. This is very important, copy from. Uh, what, does it, does this, uh, what does it do? So as the name entails, it allows us to copy. So let's say that I will create, now this is something that we do need to do 12 times, but at least it's only this thing that we need to do uh, 12 times. So I'm going to do T-Series 21. So this would be the group that's arriving uh, in, the month of, uh, in the month of May. Uh, so we are doing again uh, May, and we're doing it from the 10th until the 16th of May. Company is the same. So at this stage, if I start creating blocks, um, you know, it's going to take me some time. Uh, and when I need to do this for the whole year, it's going to take even more time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come here, use the copy from button. And I'm actually going to locate our original event, our original group, so T-Series uh, 20. I'm, I can search by different options. I'm going to use just the company profile. And here it is, T-Series 20. I'm going to select it. Uh, I'm going to say, uh, starting from the 10th of May, and I'm going to say, in this case, I want to copy just blocks. Anyway, I only have blocks in that, uh, in that event. So I'm just going to be copying blocks. Here, this new person count, you can enter one or zero. At this point, when it comes to blocks, this doesn't really matter at the moment. Uh, we'll see that when we have meeting room bookings or, or, or catering involved. And I'm just going to copy. And once I do this, here you see, immediately I have all my blocks basically uh, copied including rates, prices, everything is here just with the new dates of the event. So this way I can continue doing the same. I can create my T-Series 22 for June and copy from, uh, to copy all the blocks and so on. Of course, here, maybe if something changes, I can say, okay, for this particular event, it's not going to be seven apartments, but maybe eight apartments, that's absolutely fine. But the bulk of the information, the one that's the same every single event, uh, I can save quite a lot of time by copying uh, like this when it comes to blocks. Yes, you need to create actually the event page first for the new event, uh, but um, at least the bulk of the information that uh, you need to enter for each one, you can copy from the previous, uh, from a previous uh, uh, event or, or group that, that has happened uh, here. And uh, yeah, this way I can continue and otherwise the process is the same. I'm, I can continue to convert my blocks into bookings when I receive the rooming list, etc. You see bookings are not copied, obviously, just, just the blocks. Uh, so that is why it's very useful, uh, very helpful, the, the copy from function, uh, because yeah, these group series that I have where the conditions are the same, the number of rooms are generally the same, the number of nights that they stay is generally the same. I can just uh, from now create all these events very quickly uh, using the copy from, and of course, reserving the, the rooms uh, from the block. But the events module, of course, is not limited only to, to group reservations. Um, the main kind of purpose as well is to handle actual events um, that you do in your property. Um, and this is where uh, uh, the, the meeting room uh, reservations come into play, the catering activities come into play and so on. And now here we are seeing again um, the, the event that we saw in, in the beginning. And this is now at the end, uh, uh, this is a fully completed 
process, uh, essentially, uh, from negotiation to sending an offer, signing an offer, um, paying a deposit, and converting potential blocks into bookings and having a single invoice. Uh, now, again, not, uh, not all of you will be seeing these two sections. You'll be seeing them only if you have the license for the MICE module and the option to create meeting rooms uh, in the system. Um, but you know, those for you who, who have the segment, you'll be seeing these, uh, these sections as well. Now, what is the purpose of these sections? Well, to indicate if there, is a, if there are any meeting room bookings. So here I have created one meeting room reservation just by clicking add. And I have indicated that this event or this uh, meeting room reservation is for the 3rd of April, starts from 10, 10 a.m., is going to be seven hours, is going to happen in this meeting room. Of course, I can choose more if uh, that is the case, but I'll just choose this meeting room. It is for this event, this company, etc. And then here we have what is the activity type, what is the uh, what is the setup style that we need. Now, all of these options here that you see now at the moment, these are customly created. There isn't anything built in into the system. You can create any kind of activities that you that you offer for for everything. And you see, I'm not uh, going in. Uh, I'm not just limiting myself into. Uh, the general type of activity like um, a conference uh, or a wedding or a birthday and so on, but also the small sub-activities that can happen like a dinner, uh, a breakfast, lunch, coffee break. We'll see in a moment why, but the more detailed here, the better. And do not limit yourself just to the main type of activity like a conference or a cocktail or uh, a team building event or, or whatever, but also create the coffee breaks, the, the business lunch. Um, you see, I have even done breakfast, late breakfast, a la carte breakfast, group breakfast, because in my property, I offer these different types of breakfasts when it comes to an event or, or a dinner, group dinner, basically a set menu or a la carte dinner, etc. So um, use the imagination basically and create anything that may happen as an activity type. Well, the setup style, I think that is self-explanatory for those of you who deal with, with events, uh, conference and so on, you know these are much better than, than me, the type of setup style, theater, U-shape, classroom, et cetera. Uh, then number of persons, how many persons are going to be attending this um, meeting room, uh, essentially activity. Uh, this is very important information, of course. And then different types of descriptions. Now description one, just the description. This is something that can be visible in, for example, the offer that you sent into the event uh, documents that you can send to the organizer. Well, description for the staff is... Um, obviously strictly internal and it is visible in, in the function sheet only um, in, in the system. So yeah, uh, you can write two different things obviously and indicate what needs to be prepared by what time um, and any specifics, of course, if, if any, uh, you, can, you can write down. Uh, so that is one thing, the meeting room. Uh, of course, I can continue creating more reservations. Maybe in the morning, there was a small activity in one uh, meeting room. Then later on in the afternoon, there was a bigger activity with more attendees in, an, in a larger meeting room. I can continue adding more meeting room bookings here and indicate type, a setup style, and add all the information both for the organizer, for the guests, and for the staff uh, as well. Uh, there is no real limit to, to, to this. Now, the, the other part, of course, is, is the catering. Uh, very often, when you're doing such kind of events, um, there is some catering activity involved, be it a coffee break in the, in the morning before the event starts, or a coffee break in the afternoon, 
um, lunch break um, at noon, uh, or if the event is a wedding, let's say you have a, a, a cocktail in the beginning, um, then the actual, of course, um, reception, and maybe there is some catering activities after the, the main reception, you know, for, for the all-nighters or, or uh, the late-night people uh, that want to continue on. Maybe there is another catering activity uh, as well uh, later on. So we can indicate all those catering activities as well. Here you see that I have two coffee break in the beginning before the actual meeting room conference starts. And I have also a lunch break between uh, 12.30 and 1.30. When we're creating these catering activities, the information that we can enter is roughly the same as a meeting room reservation. And here is now, uh, you see why I have created even these small activities as activity types. Uh, because now for the catering activity, obviously, uh, for the coffee break, the coffee break obviously is not a birthday. Uh, um, you know, I need to indicate that this is a, a coffee break. So that's why I have actually created even these small sub activities that are part of the of the big activity uh, so that I can select them, especially when it comes to uh, the catering activities. Um, the setup style will be cocktail style, number of people. And again, here I have description, which would be in the documents, maybe what would be provided during this, this coffee break, coffee, tea, mineral water, uh, refreshments, maybe some sweets, cookies, etc. And of course, the, the notes here is description for the staff. Again, this is for the function sheet, strictly internal, how many cups to prepare, how many glasses to prepare, um, how many jugs of orange juice to prepare, you know, everything that uh, the, the staff need to be aware about this uh, and basically need to work on prepare the, the location. And speaking of location, that is something important that we can enter here. We can enter, either select a restaurant if we have uh, a restaurant created uh, or we can use the location. How do we create restaurants? Uh, actually, we need to go into our uh, settings in the PMS here under meal we have the button restaurant. And from here, we can create our different restaurants. Uh, Function-wise, it doesn't really do much, but information-wise, uh, it, does, it does a lot, uh, of course, especially when it comes to the events. And here I can indicate, I'm indicating that this coffee break is at, is at the bar. And uh, I can maybe even write some extra indication where exactly for example. So this is important because it's also indicated uh, in the function sheets. It's also indicated in, uh, in the documents or the offers that we can send to the organizer. Uh, similarly, here you see I have added my lunch. That happens in the main restaurant. Again, 150 people just at a different time, of course. Now, we have indicated we have done our meeting room booking. We have indicated our catering activities, when, where, what are we providing? We've added all the information and so on, but we haven't mentioned anything about prices, of course. <coughs> so, excuse me. So you see that after we create our meeting room booking or catering activity, now for each one of those, we have the charge button. And we can use that charge button, which will open the charge screen those of you who've worked with the PMS for some time, you're very familiar with this screen because you see it in any folio that you work with with the system. And um, here I have created in my charge templates a my section and have my different options. And here I can say I want to apply a meeting room rent. In this case, I have set it with a floating price and I can indicate, okay, what is going to be the price for the meeting room? then for the meeting room rent. Then I can, uh, again, from the same place, go uh, and add uh, maybe the, the cost for the stationery. I'll do 150 people times the stationery. So I have all this uh, basically posted into the folio 150 times. Um, same with the catering activity. So obviously the coffee break is not free of charge. So I'm going to come here, click on charge, 
enter 150, and then select my uh, charge template that I have created for this purpose. Uh, now I have basically combined everything into one charge template, you know, coffee, water. I'm just charging five pounds per person for the coffee break. I can go a bit more detailed, of course, but I, I don't see the reason and I don't think that's really a practice. A coffee break, five pounds per person, that's all. Once we do this, basically all of these charges, you see them automatically posted in the folio. So you see now, that I have a source indication for what exactly is this charge. So we see that for the uh, event from nine until 10, that is the, our coffee break essentially. Uh, no, this is our conference. We have our coffee break charges for the convention in the convention center. Then we have our charges related to the meeting room, the stationary, the meeting room rent, uh, and then we have our charges for the lunch. So if there are more charges, of course, they'll be listed down here and uh, with an indication, with a source, what, from where are these charges coming from? What are they for? And of course, these sources are also visible in the invoice that we can issue to the organizer. We see this. Now, um, there are many different options when it comes to the invoicing and the visualization on the invoice. Uh, we can have these sources or we may not have these sources listed down. We can have things separated or we can have things combined. It really depends on what are your needs, what are your wants, but uh, it, it requires a different setup. So when it comes to this, uh, if um, visualization on the invoice for you is very specific that you want, I strongly recommend to go into our support portal uh, and go to uh, this article he here, presentation on, uh, of the event invoice. This article provides a lot of detailed information exactly about, about this and with the different options that you have, combining charges into one line or not, or separating them, showing sources or not showing sources, just because it's quite a lot um, and it's, yeah, we won't really have the time at the moment to go through all these different options. But the uh, thing to remember is that you're not limited into only this uh, option. Uh, you have plenty of different, first of all, view options. And then within the view options, you can control if, for example, let's say the stationary and the meeting room rent to be combined on one line if you if you want that, or the coffee break and the business lunch to be combined on one line. There are many different options in regards to that. Uh, so this way I have basically everything um, listed down here. Uh, all the charges uh, are posted here. Now uh, let's imagine that, you know, this was a discussion and negotiation and at this stage, you know, uh, we have confirmed everything. The event is not yet happening, but we have confirmed confirmed everything. We have the number of hotel rooms that they'll need. We have all the meeting room bookings created. We have our catering activities confirmed uh, and all the specifics and so on. And uh, we just need to send an offer. Now, something uh, I forgot to mention, very important. Uh, when it comes to rooms, hotel rooms, now, the actual event, the actual conference is a one day thing. It happens only on the 3rd of April. But you see that my event is actually until the 4th. Why is that? That is because the organizer requested from me three rooms for the speakers on the conference. They will stay the night at the hotel. And they wanted me to block three double rooms for the speakers. The process is the same as the, uh, what we saw earlier. We block our rooms, we can attach a rate, price, number of people, etc. But, uh, you know, this is just for the speakers, you know, all the rest of the guests, they are not going to be staying in the property, just the speakers. And for me to be able to use these blocks uh, and to apply these blocks, I need to have at least one night stay. So that is why I, the event is actually from the third until the fourth, uh, so that I can uh, block rooms uh, in, in my blocks and, and, uh, and create the bookings afterwards. 
uh, but the actual activities related to the actual conference, the lunch and so on, they only happen on the third. So this is something important to bear in mind when you have a one day event, but there are blocks involved. You need to give it one night uh, here when creating it so that you can block it. There is no issue for, for any of the functions. This, the fact that the departure day is, is, is the fourth, uh, it only enables you to use the blocks in this case as well. So very important to know. So uh, what do we do? We confirmed everything. Now the organizer basically wants the final offer uh, to review it, uh, potentially sign it, and even pay a deposit. Now, one of the things here uh, when creating an event or when you're editing an event and one of these fields, uh, very important one is the deposit amount. Here you can manually enter a required deposit for this event. So we have in this case, 2000 pounds is my required deposit. Why do we need this? Now, when we send the event documents or the offer, basically again from here, I'm going to select uh, my event offer. In this case, I want to do the event offer plus accommodation because I do have blocks involved. Uh, first of all, that required deposit will be uh, indicated on the actual offer. So we're going to see here at the bottom. So again, uh, now I have a different kind of template. Design-wise, it does look the same as the previous one, but here we see much more information. We see all the catering activities, meeting room bookings, uh, any notes that we have left. Again, you see these are the description for each catering activity or meeting room booking. That would be visible on the offer. We see prices per section, per segment, and so on. But uh, at the end, you see that the required deposit is also indicated here. Um, and we can send this offer to the organizer um, the same way as we did earlier. I can now save here and later on just proceed to send this. Uh, so, so yeah, uh, that is kind of the, the main purpose of, of the MICE module, of the events module. Uh, of course, there are many other uh, use cases, more hybrid use cases. Um, now, in our example, we're using a conference, but this can be a wedding with much more uh, catering activities, for example, with much more blocks for rooms, uh, with much more meeting room may uh, bookings, maybe part of the event happens in one place, another part of the event happens in another place. Uh, so it's very dynamic, but the main thing is that you have one page where you have all the information. Uh, that's kind of the, for me at least, the, uh, the main point is that I see absolutely everything on one page uh, here. Now, things happen, of course, and in some cases we might need to move an event, maybe uh, from the third, uh, instead of being on the third, to be on the fourth. Now, for me to come here and change the date in each one of these, again, would be time consuming because if I just change the event, the, the event of the date, the meeting room might not be changed or I might get an error message sometimes because of the events, now, the dates not being in order. So you have the bulk update option. And from here, you can say, okay, I want to basically say uh, for the actual event that instead of hap uh, being the third, to be the to be the fourth, and I can do this for for each one. You see, here the third becomes the fourth, and I do this for each line. Now, because this uh, again, this is a relatively small event. I don't have that many lines. It can be a huge event with many lines. I do have the auto fill option where I can say, okay, anything that has been the third of April to be changed to the fourth of April and everything that's being 4th of April to be 5th of April. And this way, everything will be changed automatically. I don't need to go line by line and, and change it. Or maybe quantity of, of, of uh, attendees. Uh, suddenly it's not 150, but it's going to be 100 people. Well, again, if I need to do this on every line, uh, now it's fine because it's four lines that I need to edit or five lines, but if it's a huge event, it, it would be much more. 
Uh, so again, the auto fill option, I can come here and I can say, okay, 150 becomes uh, 100. And that will change everything that's 150 will change it to 100, uh, essentially. What's the difference between 150 only and 150.0 in this case? This is quantity of the charges. So you see business lunch said this is the charge template that I posted. Well, this 150 without the, the zero afterwards, this is the number of attendees. So that's kind of the difference. You might uh, wonder why, especially in the auto field, you have one time 150 and one, one time 150.0. One is the number of attendees. The other is the number of charges. Um, and in this case, they should be the, the same. So I'm going to change both to 100, for example. Uh, so, so yeah, if you need to do so, such bulk updates, you have also that, that option, that tool to allow you very quickly to, to make those changes um, that, you, that you need. And that will take some time if you need to do it uh, manually. Um, so, so yeah, in a nutshell, basically this is uh, with, with the events module and with the mice part when we actually have an event. Now, app is uh, our next topic. Uh, that is a relatively new feature. Maybe uh, I'm not sure if there is even a year since we released it. I think it was in 2022, not earlier. Um, so many of you might not be familiar yet with it. Uh, to make full use of it, uh, however, uh, the main function there, or one of the main functions that it has is also the option for paying for the organizer to pay the required deposit. So for that, you need a payment processor from our supported uh, and uh, uh, partnered payment processors. So here, I'm going to show you what the event confirmation app does and how does it work. So, uh, we have our event offer that we're sending with all the information here that we saw that we've entered blocks, uh, catering activities, meeting room bookings. And uh, basically this is what the organizer is going to receive this email. And in the templates or in our default templates or in templates that you create, you have this online confirmation option here and the organizer can click it. And that will take them to our event confirmation app. Uh, so here we have this step, they can view the offer. You see exactly the offer that we've sent them with all the information, they can review it. They can see uh, the total amounts, et cetera, et cetera. They can proceed to the next step and sign the offer, which for many of you, this is important, of course. And if there is a required deposit needed, um, the guest can pay that required deposit. And of course, if you are using a supported payment processor, if you're not using a supported payment processor, I'm afraid uh, you can only use the review and signature function of the confirmation app. The deposit um, cannot be paid uh, this way. So in this case, because I have already a card saved in my events from, uh, from this guest, I can use the same card. Uh, the, the organizer can use their same card or they can enter a new card and they can just follow the steps to uh, make payment. Uh, now this is a simulation, this is a test environment of payment. This is the 3D secure simulation. And now the organizer goes through this whole process. And if everything is fine, they have the funds in the card, the card is with correct details, etc. cetera. Uh, we will basically have, first of all, automatically the status of the event will become guaranteed. That's point number one. Second of all, uh, you will be receiving to-do messages that an offer has been signed and that basically a payment has been made and that there is a, a deposit has been has been paid and uh, we will have this payment as well automatically posted in the folio. Uh, so you can see our total is 6,700. We have 2,000 that we just paid and we have our remaining balance. So this way the organizer saw the offer, reviewed it, 
sign that they agree with all the conditions and even pay the deposit that you request from them. So it's a very quick, very easy way. No emails involved, no contacting you. Hey, I'm the organizer of event uh, X. Um, I, I have offer number 47. I want to confirm. I want to, to I want to give my car details over the phone so that you can take the deposit. You see this process happening over the phone or, e or over email, very time consuming, very difficult. So if we give the option uh, and if you use the event confirmation app for this purpose, it's much more kind of streamlined uh, and clear. Uh, we have our payment posted. We know it's a real credit card, an accurate credit card. And the guest has reviewed the offer and signed it as well, which is, of course, very important uh, here. So this is also what the event confirmation app does, basically. Th th those are the three steps that we saw. There isn't anything more um, to it. Review the offer, sign it and potentially pay the deposit. That's all that the event confirmation app does, but it actually saves hours and hours and hours of work and time and unnecessary communication uh, and so on. How can the act uh, organizers actually access that confirmation app? As you saw, through an email, um, in this case, through an offer. Now, in Clock, uh, by default, you have two document types uh, related to events. Those are the banquet event order, which is the offer, basically. Uh, and we have the function sheet. The function sheet, obviously, many of you are familiar with this. This is an internal document for the staff where everything is explained about this event. All the notes, all the description for the staff are listed down. Uh, basically, everything about this event is on the function sheet uh, and is strictly internal, uh, mostly because also the description for the staff are present here. While the banquet event order is uh, this offer that we saw already a couple of times, uh, which is the offer that contains all the information from the event. Uh, now, of course, our now for the especially for the bucket event order because it's a guest facing document organizer guests clients see that document um you might want to make changes um uh, in our built in template that we offer for you to use basically we've added every single piece of information to be present uh from from the event but maybe for some situations you want to remove some information and uh, in order to do that, you can, you're free to create as many documents, as many different offers that you want or you need uh, from the settings and here from the event document templates. And this is, by the way, also the place from where you can create your activity types, all those coffee breaks, uh, conferences, birthdays, weddings, etc., or the setup style, you can create them from here. Uh, but uh, what we're focusing on is the event document templates. So from here, you can create as many different documents as you need. And in my example, what I have done here is I have one, uh, created one template for just an event. There is no accommodation involved. So just a meeting room uh, reservation, for example, and some catering activities, but nobody's going to stay in my hotel room. So I'm not going to be using blocks. So in this template, I do not have anything related to rooms, to blocks and so on. I have another template, which is an event plus blocks, plus accommodation. And there I have all the information. I have a ter third template where I just have uh, which is a group offer. This contains information only about rooms. And here, uh, when, when we see the actual template, you see it is the same as the previous ones, but actually the information here is different and it only contains the section for the rooms. It doesn't contain anything, anything else, just not to clutter the template and the email unnecessarily. Uh, so you're free to create as many different templates as you need in as many different languages as, as you need. Uh, here you just click on add, enter the name, group offer two, 
Uh, here it is. I can click on template and uh, always use the visual builder. Now that is the the editor that provides you uh, much more options in terms of designing and it can be much more familiar. You can enter a subject, create the template in different languages that you have and so on, and basically create your template from here, which will open the visual builder. Now, I'm not going to be going too much into the visual builder because uh, as a matter of fact, this would be the topic for our next webinar. So be on the lookout for uh, when the registration opens for our next webinar. Maybe it would be in a month uh, or two, we'll see. Uh, but our next webinar will be uh, on how to use the Visual Builder. Uh, although it's very user friendly, uh, it is familiar because many other systems that create emails and so on kind of follow the same logic and, and the same structure. Um, but from here, if you're familiar already with the Visual Builder, you can um, you know, load, for example, one of our ready to use templates for the banquet event order um, and start making changes. As a start, maybe you want to change the name of it. So you can just delete uh, the, uh, the name and say event offer, uh, make any changes, delete some sections uh, from here, add some sections, obviously change coloring, design, uh, uh, sorting of the sections, which is after which, or remove some information, add some information, you're free to create uh, and do whatever you need with these templates. Uh, again, there are a lot of things here about the Visual Builder. Uh, we'll talk about those in our next webinar uh, so that even those of you who have no experience in creating templates like this with you know nice design, uh, different information, different elements, and so on. Uh, after that webinar, you'll be able to create very stunningly visual uh, emails uh, with, with nice graphics, with, with inform proper information, with different elements, buttons, and so on. So be on the lookout for that next webinar. Uh, but uh, to come back to the point, you can edit here your document uh, template and I basically have it ready to use uh, in, in an event, uh, essentially, through uh, the section event documents that we already saw a couple of times. Again, when you click Add, you see for these three first. These are our, our built-in uh, documents. So I'll, I'll generate the event of order so that you see it. Uh, this is our built-in template. Uh, and it's, uh, you know, uh, design-wise, uh, it doesn't have a lot of formatting, it doesn't have a lot of design and so on. So that's why uh, many of you who already use the module and so on, uh, you create a custom one so that you can apply your design, your branding to it, the different elements and the different information. So these, uh, these documents that you see above uh, the hyphens are our built-in ones while the ones underneath are the ones that you have created um, yourselves or your marketing team or your uh, graphic designer, etc. So yeah, that is about the events module. Um, uh, I see we have some questions. I'll jump into them uh, momentarily. Uh, as mentioned, um, if you have any questions, uh, if something wasn't clear or there is some case that you didn't really find the answer to in this webinar, uh, feel free to either contact me uh, via email, the support team, or uh, go through um, the articles here because, again, they are very detailed, very explanatory, uh, contain quite a bit of information uh, as well. So, yeah. Uh, that is all for now. Now let's have a look at the questions that um, uh, that we ha <coughs> that we have. Uh, so we have um, a, a couple of questions from uh, Lena. What is the difference between company and agent? Uh, actually, let me go back into the. <coughs> Uh, to the event. 
Um, so in terms of profiles in clock, um, a company and an agent, I mean, they are the same thing. Uh, they are available here under the company uh, section. You create a company profile. Uh, an agent, uh, that profile will be considered an agent if you select it as an agent here. Uh, it is possible quite often to have both company and agent. For example, Clock Software organizes an event in your hotel through an agent that you know is dealing with that. So here I'll have Clock Software as the company because you know they are the ones that are going to be, you know, they are or the event organizers, let's say. But the actual booking and so on contact came through through an agent, some travel agent or uh, event agent, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. This is kind of a, the more basic explanation. Uh, very common, you have that in in uh, room bookings, in normal bookings, uh, where um, the guest works for company X. He or she is on a business trip. They work for company X, so I'll have their company selected as a company. But their booking was made, let's say, through Booking.com or from a travel agent, from a tour operator. So I have that, the profile of that travel agent, tour operator and so on, selected uh, as an agent. Uh, then uh, again, uh, a question from Lina, when you create the booking, will the block uh, uh, automatically go away? Yes. So the moment we convert a block into uh, a reservation, uh, the block is depleted. So there is no risk, you know, having both bookings and still active blocks. So as long as the booking, and this is something to remember, we mentioned it earlier in this webinar, as long as the booking is allocated to the event and the block itself, the block will be automatically depleted. If this booking is only attached to the event, but not to a block, then the block does not get depleted and you basically have an extra booking uh, on top. But when we do the, the reservations from here, book, and we do uh, we select our block, we ensure that we are actually using up the block and we're not creating extra bookings uh, on top. Um, now, uh, we have an interesting question from, from Rajiv uh, about uh, two pieces of information that we can enter uh, in, a, um, in an event. And that is uh, essentially the cutoff dates or the expiry date. So here, this is in the main settings of the of the event. Uh, the expiry date, what does it do? Basically, if we set up an expiry date, so let's say I'll do March 8th. Our event is on the 3rd of April. We have blocks. So this is really relevant if you have room blocks, hotel room blocks. What will happen is that on the 8th of March, any blocks that have not been converted, this is very important, that have not been converted, they will be automatically released for sale. So let's let's imagine that we actually had five blocks here instead of three, or let's just do it, not imagine it. So I have actually three bookings created, so three blocks are converted, and I have two remaining blocks. On the, on the 8th, of April, uh, 8th of March, if those blocks were not converted into a bookings, the system will automatically release them for sale and they will no longer be reserved for this event in particular. So this is what the expiry date does. On a cer certain day, it released all the unused blocks for the event. Now, we also have a, uh, another option, which is the cutoff days. This uh, works as a, a more as a traditional release date um, uh, for those of you who work with tour operators uh, and so on. Um, you already know, basically. What happens is we enter a certain period of time. So let's say two weeks. So you see, it's not an actual date. It's, it's a number of days. So what will happen is that two weeks before the 3rd of April, any unused blocks for the 3rd of April only will be released for sale. And let's imagine that this was a longer event. Then uh, two weeks before the 4th of April, 
any unused blocks for the fourth will be released. And this way with each passing calendar day, another day of the event or any unused blocks from the event will be released for sale. Uh, so yeah, hopefully this answers your question. We have another question from Lino. When creating a new event, you said that the company is necessary. Can we mark it with a star as well, like the name? Uh, I'm not really sure what you uh, you mean uh, here in the in the field. Okay, I, I know what you mean. Uh, I know what you mean. Just to have the the little star icon that it's required. Uh, yeah, I'll pass this along uh, to our development team uh, to to look into. Indeed, it's not marked as required, but it is actually required. Uh, for meetings, especially, it will be uh, non-resident packages. Uh, we have a we have a question from Mark. Uh, let me just see such a. I. Uh, I understand what you mean, Mark. Basically, um, Mark's question is related to uh, essentially delegate packages uh, for 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 meeting rooms. So uh, for events, basically, you have a set price. Let's say a hundred pounds, hundred euro, whatever, per person for attending this, let's say, conference. But then, actually, those hundred pounds uh, would be allocated to different elements: uh, the coffee break the meeting room rent, for example, the lunch and so on. Basically all those different elements that uh, can generate uh, generate the price essentially to be grouped into um, basically one charge as a delegate package. Now this can be achieved, Mark. However, uh, because it's quite extensive, I would suggest uh, that you check uh, this article here, uh, Mice Copy From Function Part 2 event templates. Uh, this one um, can basically, uh, this article along with the next one, presentation on the event invoice, uh, can answer that, that question and how you can achieve it. It is achievable, there are some specifics to it, um, but it is possible. Um, if needed, uh, we can uh, discuss it with you directly on a later stage uh, through some other channels. Uh, if you do not find the answer in the articles, uh, just reach out uh, and we'll look at uh, further. Uh, we have a question from Eric. Uh, is a credit card uh, the only option? Uh, for the moment, yes, for the event confirmation app for payment. Uh, any, at the moment, alternative payment methods like ideal, like bank contact, uh, PayPal, uh, and so on. Um, at the moment, they're not supported. It's just paying with a card for the moment. Uh, we have another question from Rajiv. When you copy the bookings during creating a booking in event, does it affect uh, on the actually, I think? Uh, uh, Rajiv, as long as you go through here, so you start creating your, your, your start converting your block into booking from here and you make sure you have the block selected, when you use the copy function for the bookings, that will copy also the block. So this way, the copies will also deplete the block and there will not be extras on top. Uh, it's just, again, a matter of making sure that when you're creating the booking, at least the first booking, here you have the block allocated. You see double direct, double, one person, zero adults, etc. This is the block. So as long as you ensure that you have this, uh, you will be depleting the blocks when you do copies. Uh, what happens with the block if you cancel a booking? So if you cancel a booking, the block still remains uh, active, uh, essentially. So uh, you, know, you cancel the booking, but the block is still there. So that room will continue to be uh, essentially reserved for the event. Uh, uh, it, Hopefully that answers your question, uh, Juan. Uh, so yeah, if you need to remove the block, uh, if that cancellation is, I mean, general, you need to reduce your block uh, in the event as well with one room for the respective dates. 
canceling the booking will not reduce the block. Uh, we have a question about uh, from Daniela about uh, reports, uh, guaranteed events where you can see. Uh, so in regards to uh, reporting wise, that uh, and event wise and so on, that heavily depends on how your charge templates are built, how your revenue, your revenue categories are built and so on, so that you can use the charge summary reports or charge segmentation reports, uh, et cetera. Uh, so there isn't really a specific report in the system um, directed to revenue from events. It's still the charge summary or the charge se segmentation report, basically the main revenue reports in the system. That doesn't mean that there are no plans or ideas for future to improve on that. But for the moment, uh, there isn't really a revenue report in the system that is strictly about the events. It's again, the chart summary, the chart segmentation report. Uh, here you have some different screens that can assist you with that. Maybe the, the activities, it's an in interesting uh, kind of screen, even though it's a search thing. Uh, it does provide later on a lot of information, including prices and so on. Uh, but again, in terms of revenue, you can get it even now, but that depends really on, again, the setup of your charge templates and the revenue categories, how they are separated. If you have your revenue category separated F&B for, uh, for uh, events, uh, meeting room rent for events and so on, you can get that revenue. Uh, so, uh, yeah, for the moment, this is kind of the situation for the... Uh, for the events. Uh, okay, and uh, we have a question from uh, Rabia. Rabia. Yes, uh, this uh, webinar will be available uh, in the next day or two. Uh, we will, first of all, email all the attendees. But at some point you will also see that, and again, it would be in the next couple of days, you see it in our support portal in the webinar section. Here you can also view our previous two webinars about the book direct, the new version of the web preservation system and about the new rate management screen, which is now released for quite some time. But here you, you'll be able to see all the recordings of all the webinars until now. Uh, we have also, uh, and this would be uh, the last question that uh, for today, is there a section where we can see all uh, meeting room rentals on one sheet? Um, we do have now uh, the meeting room calendar. Uh, here it works roughly like the room calendar uh, that some of you or most of you would be familiar. Here you can generate it for a specific period with a starting date and I can do 31 days. And um, I can see for each meeting room, basically what I have for, we, well, for which day. Uh, actually, let me do April here because that is when we had uh, some meeting room bookings. Uh, so you see they are uh, indicated in this way. Uh, and um, the green color means it's a guaranteed booking. Uh, yellow color means that the meeting room is, uh, rent is optional. So here you can see kind of in a calendar view, when do you have a, a meeting room available? Do you have a meeting room available for a certain day, for a certain time? Which meeting rooms uh, you have available, etc. So you can see that uh, from here. Uh, or alternatively, you can also use the uh, this option here, search event activities, where you can filter this down and say, uh, okay, I want to see for my meeting rooms and generate a very long period, let's say, if you want to see a very long period. Uh, and here I can see, okay, all my meeting room bookings, I can do more compact, uh, compact or more detailed information. And I can, uh, you know, just adjust it and, and use what fits best. Uh, but this way I can see, okay, here you see meeting room bookings. I can do meeting room bookings only, and I'll be seeing only them uh, for the selected period for the selected meeting rooms. So uh, hopefully this uh, answers your question, uh, Sarah. Okay, great. Well, uh, this is all for now. I see that there are no uh, no other questions. 
Uh, let me see. Uh, so, so yeah, uh, if something comes up, um, of course, again, um, we'll have the webinar available in the next couple of days. Uh, or you can also refer to the support portal, to me directly, or to uh, the support team. If you have any questions, if you need assistance, uh, we, of course, will be uh, more than happy to, uh, to assist. Uh, one last question just, uh, just popped up from Marisara. Uh, is it possible to have a pop-up uh, when the expiry date comes at the moment? Unfortunately, no, there isn't really a pop-up that indicates to you that an expiry date for an event has come. Uh, basically, on, that, on the day, on the expiry date, the blocks are released and uh, yeah, the, the rooms are then available for sale uh, uh, anywhere uh, online. Okay, great. Well, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you for uh, also to, to, to the people who um, stay, stayed throughout, to, throughout the whole webinar. I appreciate you. Uh, and to those who are basically joining every single webinar that we do, we're continuing with this uh, series uh, of webinars. As mentioned, next topic would be the visual builder. So for those of you who want to build nice emails in the guest mailer and so on, make sure to keep an eye for the invitation for it and register. Um, and um, yeah, until next time, uh, there will be also more uh, webinars on the events topic, but with more specific situations in mind, not so general um, overviews and so on. So keep an, uh, keep an eye for those as well. Uh, and uh, yeah, thank you for your attention. Um, and if you have any feedback about the format of the webinar, about the information and so on, feel free to also answer on um, the feedback form that we'll send to you uh, tomorrow. Well, thank you very much. Have a lovely day, evening, depending on uh, where you're located. And until next time.